Well, hello, welcome to the future of gaming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hope you're all well today. Great to see so many faces in the audience, and particularly what is you know a, a very new event for us in the, what is a, a nascent market. But um, I'm really, really glad to have Reese Hancock with me today. Hello. Co-founder and managing director of MetaVision. Hello. Um, you've been on a bit of a journey, and I'm, I'm super glad that you've agreed yeah. to come speak with second us today. Running, so yeah, so second, yeah, yeah exactly. The difficult and second album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it won't go as well as last time, trust me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, I will. Um, so j just, just give me a bit of context as to um, the journey you've been on, because it's a bit of a unique one. And um, just tell us what you've been doing at MetaVision and, and why you started the company. Yeah, yeah. So um, MetaVision um, is a studio, an agency for the metaverse. We um, work with brands, agencies, and entertainment companies around bringing, bringing campaigns to life in platforms like Fortnite, Roblox, and, and other platforms as well. We're part of the ITV group. I don't know if anyone was here for Dame Carolyn. Earlier, I got, a, I got mentioned, although she mixed me up for another Reese who's in charge of ITVX product. I am not in charge of ITVX product. Um, and so, yeah, the journey that we went on was, so me and my co-founder, Luke Price, uh, we were friends from university, and we used to come up with TV show formats together. And I was actually at the London School of Economics uh, just over two years ago doing some research around PSBs and younger audiences and how the BBC, ITV need to sort of reach out to younger audiences to connect with them and de develop a relationship outside their own platforms. And so we were kind of, at the time, how, how can they do that? Um, platforms like TikTok, Instagram, more digital native content. And then alongside that was the pandemic and sort of got back into gaming. And if you knew where to look, sort of the rise of Fortnite concerts and, and Matthew Ball's work on sort of defining what the metaverse is. And then ITV uh, put out for uh, new uh, youth facing businesses in a venture process called Studio 55 Ventures. And we put forward MetaVision as a strategy to answer that sort of uh, need to develop relationships with young audiences outside of traditional linear channels. Uh, and so we, yeah, we built a, stra a strategy and uh, over the course of 10 months we worked with ITV senior management and then Dame Carolyn and the board invested in us in April 2021, um, which was pre-Facebook rebrand around the time of the Roblox IPO and sort of pre the sort of NFT craze as well. And yeah, we, we've got, kind of got two bits to our business, or three. One is like a creative agency for these spaces, so we work with brands. So we did a big thing with John Lewis last year at Timberland. Uh, we've got four campaigns coming out this quarter. Um, sort of working to translate them, we'll come up with concepts and sort of manage that coming into platforms like Fortnite and Roblox. And then we also work, uh, we have an entertainment side, so we work closely with ITV Studios. What are the new entertainment brands that are born in the metaverse? Um, building audiences and then turning them into sort of 360 digital propositions. And then finally, we kind of work with ITV strategy around what, it, what, what ITV Group's Metaverse Web3 strategy is. So yeah, pretty busy, but, uh, but exciting. Yeah, it sounds busy. Uh, you know, you're, you're behind launching IP like I'm a celeb into Fortnite. Yeah. And um, that's just a bit crazy. But, it, I mean, it was, yeah, it, it didn't make sense on paper, but we did it anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. Um, but, you know, I think it, you know, we've had this huge amount of hype around what the Metaverse is. And I think, you know, we were talking about the Gartner curve earlier, hype, 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 and yeah, then yeah. suddenly it drops. Yeah. And there's obviously this concern that it might drop now. Um, but, you know, now we're past that hype. Yeah. What is it that everybody in the audience really needs to know about the Metaverse and where it is now? So I think when we started this journey two years ago, it was very much an audience-led play for us, that there is a huge addressable audience in platforms like Fortnite, Roblox, and Minecraft. Uh, and you can build content there. It's UGC, um, and and but people need to understand how to reach that point. I think through things like the NFT boom, Web3, uh, Facebook sort of going on their VR strategy, there's been a lot of confusion as to what that is. But I think after a year of, I guess, I think certainly NFT sort of kind of slided away a little bit, and then VR doesn't really have that huge audience that is required. Ultimately, media is an eyeballs business, so it's about creating content that's gonna be seen by lots of people, and those kind of platforms are where um, are, are where agencies and brands can do that. Um, and it's also about the type of experience, so I think there's a lot of confusion as to what the metaverse is, and I, our definition would be it's, it's about the type of experience. It's interactive, it's social, so for us, we see these platforms as much as social platforms as we do gaming platforms. It's interactive, and it's entertainment-led. Again, say the, the meta um, vision of the metaverse is we're all gonna be doing our Zoom calls in, in VR. I don't necessarily think that's the case. It's, it's about people hanging out with their friends, experiencing cool shit, basically. I think that is certainly in the, in the, in the short to medium term, that is certainly what it's gonna be. In the long term, who knows? 
I, I, we don't have the budget to do the R&D to find out and uh, like Meta do or like Epic Games do, but certainly it's going to be entertainment and social led um, in the short term. Con the concern I have um, is, you know, for example, last week, Argos and Admix did a campaign with Out of Home. And that was both in real life and online, and it ended up getting quite a lot of heat. Um, it seems it's very easy for brands to get this wrong, and I just I feel like there's a lot of brands out there who see this as a risky investment. It's very nascent market, and there's clear return you can get on TV, ITV. Yeah. So why meta? Why why metaverse? So I mean, again, it depends on how you see the space. So that Argos um, Admix activation was, I believe, Insomnium space, which has a sort of monthly active user base of in the hundreds. And, and we always talk, when clients come to us, we often say, oh, can you do this Web3 thing or NFT thing? We always try and talk about the kind of reach to innovation scale. We can get you in a platform with 80 million monthly active users. You might not be able to do as much as, as a smaller platform, but as long as you're aware of there is a scale where you might be able to do more, but you reach fewer people, then I think that's fine. But I do think the appetite for that kind of high innovation or going for the innovation story, but maybe not delivering on numbers, I think the appetite has slightly started to run out yes. on that. Um, uh, and then, yeah, yeah, so I think in terms, of, in terms of value, also it's about bringing it into a broader campaign. So one of the things we always talk about is that, that the metaverse doesn't have to be siloed as a gaming experience. It can sit within a, a broader media plan or a broad, broader campaign. And mm. what we did with I'm a Celebrity and, and John Lewis last year, for example, um, was connect it to a product placement in the show that got 10 million views and connect it to an out home on, on Oxford Street with Epic Games and, and have a sort of broader digital ecosystem around it, working with the influence of Ali A and, and Twitch as well. And it was about creating this broader ecosystem. And, and, and um, sorry, uh, it means that you can spread that risk because uh, ultimately it's a campaign that lives across lots of channels rather than just being how many players did it get, how much dwell time. But normally when you have that wider ecosystem, what you find is you. It, it delivers in game, like that I'm a Celeb mm. uh, game got mm -hmm. about 100,000 100, players in Fortnite, but more importantly, about 15 minutes average time spent, which for dwell time in, on digital channels is pretty, pretty wild. But it also delivered in terms of um, uplift, uplift for John Lewis and, and awareness because it was part of I'm a Celeb, which is the biggest entertainment show on TV. So it doesn't just have to be um, for, for the gamers, it can be part of a broader piece. And I think that's where um, media agencies kind of kind of underwrite that risk and deliver value to clients. It's an interesting point you raise about it, how, how it appears on the media plan, because um, certainly I was chatting to um, Steph Jansen from Finecast previously, and he was saying, actually, what we really need to be doing, I don't want to quote you already, <laughs> ahead of your panel that you sat on, but I thought it was an incredibly interesting point. How can we get the metaverse or gaming closer to AV so that more money comes into the media plan? Do you, how do you see the metaverse fitting on the media plan and that money beginning to flow? Yeah, I, I, I think there's a couple of things there. So ultimately, I think this is going to become a mainstream proposition. So if you look at platforms like Roblox, um, it has a very equal gender split and it's it, of a certain age group, it's everyone. So I think at some point within the media plan, it's going to need to be there because if you're targeting a certain audience, all of that audience will be there. So we kind of see it as a kind of mainstream entertainment space rather than, than a gaming space per se. And I think, I think clients maybe should think of it less as this is, this is just gaming and more of it's a, it's a meaningful channel in itself that is going to have very diverse experiences and diverse audiences. Um, I guess the, at the moment the USP of the space is that it's high engagement. And so I'm not quite sure, I'm not, I'm not an ex-media agency person, so I'm not sure what budget that will come from, but I do think it will increasingly need to take Mm -hmm. um, more of other other budgets, so maybe that might a bit might come from digital, a bit might come from out of home, because it's more of an experiential space than than just pure banner banner ads. Mm. And um, by the way, to begin thinking about some questions you might like to ask. Reese, I've got one additional question that I'd like to ask you straight away, but then I'm going to come to the audience. Um, I've got more up my sleeve, but I think you'll create better ones than I will. So, um, tell me, is is metaverse, you know? You're saying it's not just about the gamers. Is yeah. Metaverse really gaming, or is this the future of the internet we're talking about? Will yeah. you load it up like you'll load up a social media site, or read the news online, or, or watch a program on ITVX? It's, I mean, similar to my point, um, it, we see it as a sort of mainstream entertainment space, and it is born out of gaming, but I think it will sort of spread to become more, more like a version of the internet. Um, and the platforms themselves, like Fortnite and Roblox, talk about it. 
Um, I think where we'll end up is that these platforms will be like 3D web browsers, but for 3D content. But and but the sort of stopgap will be they're like Netflix or ITVX with with tiles of co different content experiences, and then you click through, and then you play these these massive experiences. So yeah, I think it it is essentially a very simple definition of the metaverse is a 3D experiential internet. So I think it in in the end it will be more like a sort of browser experience, I guess. It's, it's interesting because yesterday, I don't know how many people are of the future of media yesterday, but I was speaking with American Express on stage and they were saying they were considering you know, shifting more of their budget out of classic channels and into experiences like festivals, which is why you see American Express over all, the, you know, all points east over the summer and things like this. And actually, yes, it is about the eyeballs, but it's about the experience that yeah. comes with it. And I think that is something that the metaverse does. It provides an experience for people, whether that's gamers or people on the internet. <laughs> have we got, uh, anybody got any questions at this stage? Yeah, we've got one at the front here. Have we got a microphone at the back that we can bring forward? Thanks, hello. Uh, I'm Neil Romanik, I'm uh, editor of Feeds Magazine. And um, question, I guess it's almost a sustainability question. Um, and, uh, and, and looking at, Web three, sort of generally, if uh, is there a cap when we're talking about that the processing power and the energy required to run something like a Web three? I mean, because we're you know we, you're you're having to push a lot more data down pipes. You're having to power servers somewhere to do a lot more complex calculation. Is and especially given that we're certainly this year, and a crisis with that, and yeah. who knows how things are going to unfold. Is, is, there a, is there an issue there that I mean, potentially, I mean, I, I, if you're asking specifically about blockchain Web3, I'm, I probably wouldn't say I'm qualified to answer that, but I, I guess it's, it's a broader point. About increasingly, these kind of experiences are going to be powered by the cloud. <coughs> cloud computing, not only in terms of powering the experiences, but also, I think, in time and delivery, and that's going to be a huge, huge question. I think it's it's not just about the metaverse, I think it's about the internet in general, how sustainable is that, and as more of it shifts to AWS and Azure, how can we make that sustainable? I, I don't think that's a necessary metaverse focus question, I think, I think that's all of, all of the internet really, and the metaverse is just the next generation of what that internet is, um, which might be a cop-out answer, but I, I, I just think that is, the, that, that is the case. We have another audience question just here. Age groups. So, what would you say the next twenty-four months, twelve months, twenty-four months, are the sort of hotspot age groups that you'd be going for if you for brands to activate in? So, I think I think for Fortnite, it's it's in the in the sixteen to twenty-four. I think Roblox is going to be really interesting because a lot of our live projects have been in Fortnite, not in Roblox, because a lot of brands see Roblox as too young. But I think in the next couple of years, we'll see a lot of that Roblox audience starting to hit the kind of fifteen, sixteen, seventeen plus, and I think it's going to be really interesting to see how brands. Feed, it, feed into that platform going forwards. Um, but I think our strategic bet is that, although there might be different platforms that come along, um, we think the user, be user behaviors of um, audiences and players going in and consuming sort of 3D interactive content is gonna age up with them. Uh, again, not sure what, what those platforms will, will be. I, I assume they will be f at least Roblox and Fortnite. Um, there might be new ones, but we think those behaviors are gonna continue and that's why a lot of our work on the entertainment side is about sort of building content brands that, f that sort of feed into that, um, as well as advertising solutions. And did it work for an older generation for ITV? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that campaign was more about reaching out to audiences rather than, reaching out to younger audiences rather than translating older audiences into Fortnite. But one thing w it, that really works, and I think if you, when we posted out the video on like, I'm a Celebrity Socials, where it reaches millions of people, you can see mum was talking about, I've got to show little, little Tom and play together. And I think we can use sort of more traditional media channels to connect with the family and connect with younger audiences because often, say, parents struggle to connect with their kids because they're too busy on, on, on games or on Roblox or on Fortnite or wherever or games, gaming in general. So we can use traditional media brands like I'm a Celeb um, to, to sort of bridge that divide and make it more of a 360 sort of family proposition because it is one of Britain's biggest family shows. I think we have time for one very quick question. Um, over here, a few hands up. We, 
I've got a microphone at the back there. Hello, yeah, it's working. Great. Um, I just wanted to know, so Balenciaga released a collection in Fortnite, I think it was last year. Is that something that you think you'd be able to do as well, like with fashion brands? Balenciaga? Yeah. So that was a direct partnership with, with Epic Games. So things like skins, you have to, you have to partner with Fortnite, and that's a very... Um, that's a very close up. Like we work very closely with, with Epic Games. Uh, our Timbaland campaign was, was sent our way by Epic Games. But there are things like skins um, you have to partner with directly, or which we could potentially facilitate, but ultimately we have no say in whether that's possible. But the world building, they built a sort of Fortnite creative world. We, could, we, we work with uh, builders to do that, yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Rhys Hancock, co-founder and managing director of a company that is building the future of the internet. You'll hear his name <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> a lot in the coming years. Rhys Hancock, everybody.